Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterell here with a very special treat for you. Fresh off her dominant victory at UFC 297 last weekend, we have the talk of the town, the warrior of the weekend, Jasmine Jazz Davisius. How are you doing, Jasmine? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing super good. I, I mentioned before we actually started the interview that I'm so happy to be speaking with you right now. I think uh, you put on a performance that really endeared yourself to so many Canadians and just really brought your name to the forefront of MMA in this country. How do, how do you feel right now? I'm I'm still on top of the world like I it was last weekend but I'm I'm still like kind of like riding that riding that cloud for a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh a while back, you know, a year or so ago when I asked you about one of your fights, I think it's possibly your first UFC fight, I asked you if you would have done anything differently and your answer to me was you you would have spent more time and <laughs> made more of an effort to sort of take it in and sort of absorb what was happening. Were you able to do that this weekend or was the whole fact that it was in Toronto in your backyard and such a great fight for you? Are you able to sort of remember it or is it all like a daze? Uh, no, I made sure to like take it all in because like exactly what you said, I don't, I don't want to like waste that time. I realized that that was like something that I kind of like went through fight week so fast. And so now I make sure I'm like, these are, I'm literally living the best years of my life right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, you know, I'm realizing that and I'm able to enjoy it more. Yeah. You're not here for a long time. You're here for a good time. Exactly. So take me through before we even get to the fight and all the stuff afterward, just tell me about your, your thoughts and your feelings and, and how it was like the, the fight week leading up and all the fans that were there and all the attention you were getting and just the fact that it was in your backyard. Just, what did it feel like inside as a person? Um, I mean, if you're thinking about it, but you know, I'm thinking about the fight. I'm like thinking about how to make sure that I'm the most prepared that I can possibly be. And, uh, you know, I'm not really thinking too much about my family being there and all that. That's all just like, I don't know, part of it. But, um, but yeah, it was like, I was, I was really excited. I, I feel like being able to fight at home, there's like so much more to it. And there's like so many more people involved. And uh, I felt like everyone was like kind of on my back with me. Yeah, that's awesome. But you, of course, had other things on your mind during fight week. As we found out after the event, I didn't know this up until you, you said it in public, that she didn't make weight. In fact, there was more to the story. Could you share exactly what happened and what was going on? Yeah, so the day before weigh-ins, I got a call from Mick, and he's like, hey, your opponent's not making weight. Um, so then I was just like, okay, well, talk to my team. Like, they, they'll handle everything, and... They went to lunch and they talked to Mick and I just stayed at the hotel and pretended Ooh. nothing was going on. And uh, then they said, okay, we're going to do a 130 catch weight. And then it was like an hour later, um, the nutritionist called me and he's just like, okay, we're thinking more like 132 now. And the coaches are wow. talking to me like, yeah, it's going to be 132. And then like a couple hours later, I could hear them back and forth talking. It was like by the evening they just said, we're going to do the fight at 135 because we're worried that if we do 133 or two or whatever we were going to do, if we do that way and she still misses, then the Ontario commission will cut the fight completely. So yeah. we're just like, we know for sure she's at least 135 right now. So as long as she stays at that way, doesn't drink any more water, eat any more food, then we'll fight at 135 and, you know, no big deal. That's pretty unreal for a few reasons. I mean, one of them was you used to fight at 115. I know you had to you go through a lot to get down there, but you were still doing that for up until a short time ago. So 135, is that natural for you? Was that normal? Was that okay as a fight? I mean, not ideal, but if I, if I didn't agree to it, I wouldn't be fighting. So, yeah. you know, it's one of those I. It's not, it's not like it was too, too far away. It's not like she was 145 or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I made it work. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on to fight night now. So you fought Pr Priscilla Cachoeira. I think that's how you say her name. And right from the get-go, you just turned on the jets and, and took a tour for the whole fight. I mean, I'm not going to do a full recap because at this point, everybody's seen all the post-event stuff and they know that you outstruck her 326 to 26 which is staggering. And I think it's a record 
and I don't know if anyone, like male or female or anyone, the, 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 the strike differential, I don't know if it's possible that anybody's ever going to beat that. As you were going through, as you were going through that, and I think after the second round, she, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong. She'd only struck you maybe what, four times. So, you know, as you were going through that, did you know, realize it was, it was that much of a huge difference? No, I had no idea. Like Jelly told me before the fight, just keep like, don't admire any of your work. Just keep going mm. until the very end. And so I just did that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I saw your interview with Ariel Helwani afterward, where you said something to the effect of that, you know, you were looking at maybe getting a submission or ending the fight sooner, but you just wanted to make her pay. So, you know, how did that work? Like, as you were throwing down punches at her, were you, were you like, take this, don't miss weight, or what was going through your mind? Yeah, in the first round, when I had her up against the fence, the coaches were saying, go for a sub, go for a sub. I mean, now thinking about it, I'm glad I didn't like try to force a sub and gas myself out. But um, yeah, they were saying, try to try to go for it. I'm like, no, I'm making this girl come into a second round with me. But I did yeah. try to finish her in the second, but they call her the zombie girl for a reason. Yeah, I know. She she took a beating, that's for sure. Um, there were so many funny memes. I you know I don't mean to dis disrespect fighters anytime, but after the event, there were so many memes making fun of of the situation and how she looked and things like that. I'm just wondering if you had a chance to see those and what you thought. Uh, I saw a couple, but I kind of stay off Instagram a little bit after mm -hmm. after a fight. You know, it's finally time to spend time with my my family and everything like that. So I uh, I didn't see too much. Yeah. Did you get a chance to speak with her after the event? No, I don't think she speaks much English. Mm. Uh, somebody else I'm going to ask if you spoke with, did you speak with Dana White after the event? I did, yeah, actually. Um, when I was doing media, a guy comes up and he's just like, Dana wants to talk to you. And then I just followed him into this like suite. And Dana was there and he's like, what a fight. And then I was like... Oh my God! Uh... <laughs> and yeah. then it, like, it was like one minute of me just being like, like talking. I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> and then uh, just being like, "Thank you so much." Like, okay, bye. <laughs> and was it then that he mentioned that you got the performance of the night bonus? No, he didn't say because there was still like a bunch of fights, so I don't yeah. think he knew at that point. So that's something that uh, the, the two Canadian female fighters, you and Jillian Robertson, both got performance of the night. Was that your first one you've gotten? That's my first one. And that can be life-changing, those bonuses, can't they? Definitely is. <laughs> Any big plans for the money? I don't know yet. I was, like, driving, thinking about that today. I, I, I've been meaning to put a sauna at my parents' house, so I think I'll probably, that'll be, Whoa. like, the, the big purchase. Yeah, you know, they're getting older, and I know that saunas are really good for for older people so mm -hmm. you know it'll be nice for me as well but you know i want to i've been wanting to get it for them for a while now you should get them a sauna and a cold plunge and just go there every morning <laughs> that's kind of the idea <laughs> yeah exactly so my next question it's kind of a, an off the beaten path for this fight but did your friend ever end up getting you tattooed on her butt no, she freaking was so she still says now, oh yeah, I would do it, I would do it, but I'm like, okay, book an appointment, book a date, uh, I've got the picture, I've got this, I got that, and she keeps on like saying, oh later, oh this later, later, and but there was a guy at the gym that said that he would do it, for, like he would do it instead, so I might get him to do it, but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe Niger Top Team should put on a promotion that anybody who gets a tattoo of of Jasmine on their butt can get like a discounted membership or something. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw that uh, even right after the event, I mean, it was in your backyard in Toronto and you live just like, you know, an hour drive away, depending on traffic. You were at the gym the next day. What was your reception like from the team? It was so awesome. I was like really excited to get to the gym on Monday morning because I knew it was wrestling. So it'd be a big practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no parking in the front. So I went in the back and I like opened the door and then, like, one of the guys noticed me, and then, like, he started clapping, and then everyone looked, and they all started clapping when I came. It was, like, made yeah. me feel so good. That's got to be a great feeling because, you know, sure, you're on the big stage. You're in front of thousands of people at the arena and pay-per-view. You know, who knows how many people are watching, but 
the ones that mean the most are the ones that you see and you sweat and you bleed with day in day out so to have their appreciation has to feel pretty great exactly like they saw me on the most rough days and like you know that i'm sure them watching me i know for like my training partners the ones that i train with when i watch them i'm like oh like you you can feel for them because it's you've yeah. been in that situation it's a tough fight you know you live and you breathe with these people so when they lose their fights i mean you're down with them and when they win their fights you're you're up with them and so you know it's really great that uh you know your victory is is sure it's for you but it's more than just for you it's for everybody at the gym yeah exactly moving on to something unrelated for a second uh what do you think about or do you have any thoughts about the uc 300 announcement that kayla harrison was uh assigned to the uc and she'll be taking on um Holly Holm. Oh yeah, she'll be taking on Holly Holm. Yeah, no, I saw that. That that I think that's going to be a cool fight. I I've uh, had the opportunity to train with Kayla Harrison, and like she's she's solid. I I I can't wait to watch that fight. Mm -hmm. So she's of course known as a terrific wrestler, and your wrestling really shone through and helped you out in this fight against Priscilla. Uh, how good did it feel to know that you could just impose your will on her and take her down? It was good. Like, I feel like I was like a dog on a bone once I f found out, like, I, once I passed her legs, how easy it was to keep her down. Then I almost like wasn't setting up my shots anymore. So, you know, we'll work on that for the next fight. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, there was a bit of a, a moment of um, concern when she did pop you in the nose once. I think you sort of fell back, but I'm not sure if that was a more of a case of you being off balance or not. Yeah, I was pushing in with a, a underhook and, you know, she kind of like shucked me off. And then I was like on two knees and she hit me. But, you know, but at that point she had no power anyway. So, yeah. like, you know, my head turned because my hands were down anyway. But, you know, I shot right off, right off the knees after that. And uh, so it was, you know, you can't be 100% perfect in the fight. You're going to take a couple shots. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I mean, 326 to 26. So those two shots you just mentioned, that was like what? Like one eighth of the, the shots she hit you with for the whole event. So not too shabby. Yeah. So uh, final thing to talk about is it was announced that you are now a ranked UFC fighter. You're in the top 15. So, I mean, that's absolutely amazing. That's what you wanted for a long time and you finally got it. What does that mean for you, do you think? Or is that yet to be discussed? I'm not too sure. I always tell the coaches, give me a week to chill. I know that they're talking. They've got all these plans. And so uh, I'm sure on Monday they're going to be saying, okay, Jazz, uh, what, this is what we're planning. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Well, we'll see with you and we're all excited. And uh, Jasmine, that's all I have. I know you're, you're busy and you're, you're busy trying to relax, which doesn't actually work out so well when you're kind of in the state of mind that you're in, you're still on such a high. So I just want to thank you very much for speaking with us and MMA and all your fans in Canada. And uh, we're super happy for your success. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we get going? Just thank you very much for having me. Always great chatting. Yeah, it's my pleasure. All right, there you go, fight friends. Oh, wait, last Jasmine, I can't let you go. I, I This is the last second thing. There's been talk for quite a few years, sort of informal talk, about you having the nickname Vicious. Is it time for that finally to take hold and you officially given that nickname? I mean, if people start saying it, I feel like you, you can't choose your own nickname. The people yeah. just have to start calling you it, but... It seems like it's happening more and more, so I can see that happening. <laughs> well, this fight, I mean, you were completely vicious in the fight, so I think it's appropriate. So I'm going to see if I can run with it and see how it goes. Sounds good. All right, Jasmine, take care. Thanks a lot for all your time. Thank you.